We've searched the galaxy far and wide, peeked behind every star. Every part of our big wide universe we've explored makes one thing clear. Earth is like nothing else. But why is our shared home so unique? Life, all kinds of life, and its incredible variety. Our planet is full of it. From the birds boasting big broad wings flying high above us in the skies, to the life beneath our feet, so small we might miss it if we blink. Animals, plants, and all the places and spaces they call home make up the rich variety of life on Earth. And this, known as biodiversity, keeps our planet intact. But today, we are losing biodiversity, and quickly. This doesn't just mean we see one-of-a-kind species and spaces disappear. It puts us in danger too. So what's driving this biodiversity loss? And where do we go from here? Right now, over 1 million plant and animal species are threatened with extinction, and the average population sizes of wildlife have dropped by around 70% since 1970. We've already lost half of the world's corals and lose forest areas the size of 27 football fields every minute. So what's causing all this? There are five key drivers of biodiversity loss. Let's start with the biggest. Changes in land and sea use, especially for food production. We all need to eat, but the intensive and unsustainable way we currently produce food sees us degrade and destroy precious environments that are critical for people and nature. Already about 40% of our habitable land is used for agriculture, for livestock, and for crops that feed both people and livestock. And that's just one of the ways that our land and sea use threatens nature. Overexploiting species via harvesting or hunting and poaching is another reason we're losing biodiversity. Overfishing, for example, is happening at such a large scale, nearly a third of all monitored global fish stocks are now overfished. If we keep this up, this would spell disaster for marine ecosystems, as well as the more than 3 billion people globally who rely on fish for their primary source of protein. And that's not all. Pollution is threatening our blue planet too. There are many sources of pollution. Take plastic, for example. Our rivers and lakes are overflowing with it. And over 14 million tons make their way into our oceans every year. This impacts marine environments and the many plants and animals which live there, species which keep our planet in balance. When these spaces are polluted, species suffer, so we lose them. Our warming climate is also bad for biodiversity. The climate crisis creates more severe weather and increases the likelihood of hurricanes, floods, droughts and wildfires, which can be catastrophic for natural habitats. Changing temperatures not only affect habitats, they can disrupt how species reproduce or migrate, triggering these events when conditions aren't ideal. This puts their survival at risk, and it puts our planet where everything works together at risk too. These changes in climate, along with our increased transport and travel globally, can also cause invasive species to spread to new areas. These then compete with native species for space, food and more, or spread diseases, further lowering their odds of survival. We know what you're thinking. There's a lot threatening biodiversity, but there are a lot of us too. And if we work together, all 8 billion of us have the power to turn things around. For this to happen, we need world leaders to spark change on a global scale. This year, they have a once-in-a-decade opportunity to light that very spark. A spark that will set in motion a wave of global action and awareness like never before. The United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity 15th Conference of the Parties, or COP15 for short, is happening this year. There, world leaders and key decision makers will meet to determine global efforts for biodiversity in the decade ahead. 
we need them to approve and commit to an ambitious global plan to reverse biodiversity loss and secure a nature-positive world by 2030. A world where there is more nature tomorrow than there is today. It's critical we mend our broken relationship with nature by the end of this decade to avoid the worst impacts of biodiversity loss and global warming. Nature is, after all, one of our biggest allies against the climate crisis. To make it happen, this global plan to protect biodiversity and reverse biodiversity loss must be comprehensive. Like the Paris Agreement is for climate change, it must be science-based, it must be ambitious, and it must benefit all. The decisions world leaders make or don't make at COP15 will determine our relationship with nature and our own futures for decades to come. Till then, we must continue to act, spread awareness and encourage others to do the same. We are and always have been part of the equation. Now, let's be part of the solution. Share this video to spread the word.